The paper may have seen, no oh dear. Once I'm waiting for this bus, let me be careful the bus doesn't leave me. <laughs> Today is a very emotional day. I'm happy and sad at the same time. So I brought my car here to be dropped off <laughs> for sale. Then a car stopped by me and asked me, Hi, are you from the detention center? Guys, I didn't even I don't even know the question he asked me. I just responded yes. <laughs> I don't know melting kings. Anyways, um, those that do not have documentation to live in the UK, when they get arrested, they are taken to that detention center for for something I don't know. <laughs> Good morning guys and welcome or welcome back again to another video how are you guys doing so today is an emotional vlog i am going off to sell my car so just for the context i've used this car for two and a half years um it was my second car since i started driving in the uk and today i have to say an emotional goodbye to this car i love this car it's a nissan duke it's a girlies girl it has taken me to lots of places in the uk but today i have to let it go it's been a hard decision but yes a girl has to keep surviving so today i have arranged to get the car dropped off in a garage in milton kings um woke up early to get the kids ready and to drop them off so now my eldest is in high school and my two little ones are still in primary school so when i wake up in the morning i get all of them ready i first drop off the high school one because she starts school at half past eight and then the little ones start school at um quarter to nine and the two schools are just you know um like four or five minutes drive apart so we first get ready to drop off the high school one so this is us in her school um <laughs> i don't even know what she was saying here but they were just talking about whatever whatever so she has to go to school we're like 10 minutes early we are always you know 10 15 minutes early so it gives her time not to rush to settle in in school and then we can drive off to the ones in primary school so she got off the car and then i had to drive to the other school which is like four or five minutes without traffic if there's traffic is like 15 minutes plus or minus five minutes to get to the other school see school runs in this uk <laughs> you need extra strength but i've trained my kids in such a way that um even without the car they can get to school we can walk you know it's not a big deal whether or not we have a car so um, we are here in the primary school and usually we come a bit early because now I don't have nothing much to do in the house. So I wake up early. My duty now as a mom is just to look after my kids, you know, and just and just be a girl and just survive. And so, yes, there is nothing much to do. So I got here um, to drop off the two primary school ones. Um, usually I just do a self check, just look at the addressing basically, which I do in the house before we leave the house anyways, but just do like a final check. Um, the one in year four, which is this, she does swimming on Mondays, So I have to check her back to make sure that she remembered to take her swimming stuff. We went to the salon this weekend to braid their hair, but my second one couldn't get, um, her slots, you know, done for her. So she has to go in another time, probably over the next weekend. To get her hair braided plus mine i also have to get my hair braided because my hair is definitely old <laughs> it needs to come out so this is me to drop off the girls from here i actually went home because i forgot something in the house then i went to the car wash to get the car washed honestly i have looked after this car really really well it is up and running it's got full mot it's got full service history it is taxed um, it is full. Actually, the full was up the gauge. People do not do this. Honestly, people do not do this. But you know what? Just for being kind, kind Ketsy, I got to fill it up for the next person. Tell me why car wash is so expensive in this UK. This tiny car, the Sun Duke, cost me 20 pounds to wash. 20 pounds. Honestly, in my next car, I am planning to buy a car hoover. And watch the car by myself because I don't understand 
my next car is actually bigger than the Duke. And when I looked up at the prices over there, I think it's about 30 pounds. 30 pounds to wash that car in and out and i chose the hand wash because it does it really well um i used to have um the electric one or the automatic one whatever they call it that electric car wash but it just does the outside of the car but when i want to do the in and out then i come to the hand car wash listen guys in my next car i'm going to be washing it by myself because i don't have anything to do in the house i have to <laughs> I have to offload those little, little things. So this is me waiting for the car to be washed. The guys here, honestly, they do a good job. Um, and they get a lot of service. Because anytime I come here, I see cars just going in and out, being washed. So I came here to wash the car. After washing the car, I went again back home. I didn't film all of that. But I went again back home to have food. Because the slot for dropping up the car was 11. And I realized that I was like 45 minutes early. So I went back home to have breakfast. And to sort some few bits and pieces before i headed on the road so yeah it took about 30 35 minutes to get the in and out of the car washed and these guys honestly did do a good job it's just that 20 pounds i don't understand why car wash is so expensive let me know in your area how much they charge and if there are alternatives to getting like a cheaper car wash i don't know anyways from here i headed on the road um to melting kings so i didn't really know where i was going it was just the map that was taking me <laughs> i was driving around to milton kings and i heard that milton kings is very bubbly it's got lots of you know uh black people it is um culturally friendly there are lots of people there is my first time in milton kings i think last week i went to peter bright it was beautiful as well so this is me um so this is me like over an hour i got to milton kings there was no traffic at all and this is the place there were lots of cars that were brought from different different angles so you can choose whether i want your car to be picked up or you want to drop it off for me i don't have anything to do honestly so it was just an adventure to get the car dropped off by myself hi guys good morning once again today is a very emotional day i'm happy and sad at the same time so I brought my car here to be dropped off <laughs> for sale. Um, so they've shown me what to do. They've inspected the car. It's okay. They've given me this thing to leave the keys. So it's got two keys. It's got this one and the one I'm using to drive now. So I put both keys in there. And for some reason, my kids left this in the boot. From yesterday, we went to the salon. They left this in the booth. I have to carry this home. <laughs> and um, I'll go out to the reception. He said I, I can go to reception and use a taxi to, to go to the nearest train station. I think the nearest train station here is Bedford train station. And I'll make my, my way home so that I can get home on time to do the school runs. But yeah, it's been an emotional day. I've used this car for two and a half years. There are actually two ways you can sell your car either privately or through a third party vendor so privately you can upload it on auto trader or um carzo or there's another website i've forgotten i'll put it down somewhere and then you upload private you upload pictures and somebody's going to buy the car privately i'm not really sure how that works or how feasible that is another way is also to put it online via websites like um motorway or we buy a car i don't know if there are other websites i don't know about if you know about it put them in the comment section so you put the car there they're going to evaluate the car you take pictures of the car they're going to evaluate the car and give you a price and then on the day of the purchase they're going to you know physically inspect the car and you know pay your money so when i came here at the checkpoint they stopped me there they checked if my car has been registered for drop off inspected the car took the mileage picture of the mileage picture of the boots and a few bits and bums but as you can see i've washed this car i've serviced it it's got um insurance it's got mot i think at the at the point of selling your car that's how it should be you should get a full mot it should have a um, road tax and everything so that's what i've done so i'm going to go down now and we'll talk <laughs> oh let me laugh at myself let me just take a minute to laugh at myself because tell me why I have been lost. I have been lost. 
the journey back home has been crazy, man. <laughs> I don't, oh dear. Oh dear. I don't remember the last time I used public transport, right? Um, and so I left uh, Milton Kings to head back home. I first boarded a train, and then when I got to when I got to the train station, from the train station to my house, <laughs> I have been in three buses already, and I am lost. Because tell me why the map tells me that the next bus is going to take you to this point, and for some reason, like. I was in the bus stop, there were so many buses and I couldn't locate which bus I was going to go on because the Google map tells you which bus number to go on. I asked the driver, I'm going to this bus stop. I know I'm in the right bus, but the driver tells me, I don't know this bus stop. <laughs> Yay! So I entered a wrong bus. It took me to another place. I had to stop by and take some coffee because I was getting stressed guys I was getting stressed so I stopped there entered the second bus then the driver told me the driver of that second bus he knew where I was going like when I I told him the bus stop he told me okay get onto this bus and you have light here so he has dropped me off and I'm waiting for the third bus <laughs> so now I can know I'm close to home I can see I'm close to home but it's still some walking distance, like 20 minutes walk. So I'm waiting for the bus, which is going to be coming in four minutes. But guy, I have to laugh at myself because... <laughs> oh dear. It's not, it's not even funny, honestly. So, I, I, I was like, ah, shout outs to people who use public transport. Honestly, like, my respect for you guys has increased from, from 10 to 100. <laughs> Because when I first came to the UK, for the first one and a half years, for the first one and a half years, I was using the public transport. And the pepper my eyes saw, the pepper my eyes saw, nobody told me that, girl, be fast, be fast, be fast, be fast, and start working towards getting your license to drive. And I was very fast about it, like, very sharp. As a sharp babe I am, like, very sharp, you know. And then I got my license to start driving. So... It's been very long since I used public transport. And today, the, the, the pepper my eyes have seen. <laughs> the pepper my eyes have seen. Oh, dear. But I am still right on time to go and pick my kids from school. In fact, I have like oh, over two hours to school pick up time. So I, I still got the time to, you know, rest a while. Not rest, rest, but I, I, I have to, you know, go and learn. I'm doing a course. It gives me time to read a little bit before the kids come and sort out some little bits and pieces you get but yeah so i'm waiting for the bus <laughs> oh dear the weather is beginning to get cold this is the first time in a long time i'm wearing a jacket because usually when i'm driving the car is warm it's got a lot of heating in it but i had to borrow so this jacket is for my daughter she doesn't like wearing jacket at all so i had to borrow it from her and hey whilst i'm waiting for this bus let me be careful the bus doesn't leave me <laughs> oh guys honestly this will, will humble you honestly in, in all levels it will humble you ah anyway so when i dropped off the bus well the bus when i dropped off the car so why i dropped it off where the garage is there was no public transport from that place to get to the nearest train station and it was a very desolate place if i said desolate if i said desolate i couldn't film because i was panicking i was shaking i was like oh my god why am i so i was i was freaking out it was a very desolate place bushy road with no pathway for like pedestrians to walk i was just by myself by the roadside i was walking on the grass like I was scared honestly I was scared then a car stopped by and then a driver asked me oh this is the bus coming
finally <laughs> I'm close to home it's been a roller coaster day like today has been a lot of things happening this morning so back to the story yeah I was saying this story before the bus uh, you know came so I was walking on this road <laughs> very desolate road I can't see anybody walking there there is no pedestrian walkway there is no pathway it's just the road I don't know if you know this kind of rules, yeah? I was freaking out, so I couldn't take a video. I was so scared. Then a car stopped by me and asked me, Hi, are you from the detention center? Guys, I didn't even, I don't even know the question he asked me. I just responded, yes. <laughs> he just said, hop into the bus, uh, hop into the car, let me drop you. Where are you going? I said, I'm going to the Bedford train station. I think that's the nearest uh, train station in Milton Kings. I said, I was, I'm going to the Bedford train station. For some reason, Uber doesn't work in that place. Boat doesn't work. I don't know what is happening. Guys, like I was just in the bush. I was like, oh my God, I was freaking out. So I couldn't get an Uber. I couldn't get a boat from there. But for some reason, the guys at the guard told me, oh, you can get an Uber from here. And when you book, you can sit in the reception area and wait for your taxi. I sat there, sat there for some reason. The Uber wasn't coming, the boat wasn't coming. It kept telling me that boat is not working in this area. I don't know, Milton Kings. Anyways, so this guy rescued me. So he stopped his car. He was in with two kids, and that is what gave me some kind of assurance to sit in the car because I saw kids in the car. I was like, okay, I'm safe. Once I see kids, I'm safe. So I sat in the car. So the guy started to laugh, and um, he's he's a mixed race so he said he's done a dna test and the dna says that he is half Ghanaian and half nigerian so we started to laugh about the little things so apparently he was asking me whether i was from the detention center so i asked him hello excuse me you asked me a question but i didn't really get it he said oh there's a detention center here and i was asking you whether you were from the detention center i was like what detention center what goes on there so he said that um, those that do not have documentation to live in the UK, when they get arrested, they are taken to that detention center for for something, I don't know. And then they are released after a while to go wherever they want to go. So anytime he sees, he works along that road. So anytime he sees a black person walking along that road, he thinks that person is from the detention center because he is always seeing black people walking in that road so i was like oh no i'm not from there i'm from this garage i went to drop my car and it was like are you a business woman i said no i'm not a business woman it's my personal car I was using but i have another one now so i need to get let that go so we started to talk and then my my blood pressure came down he was so kind that guy bless him wherever he is he is so kind so lovely with the kids in the car he drove me to the nearest um bus stop you know train station and then from there I got to this train station, this, this bus stop that I have to use three buses to get home. So guys, now I am home. I can see my house from here. I am so excited. I can see my house. This is my neighborhood. I am so excited, guys. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. For constantly coming back to the channel. And until we meet again in my next video, guys. It's bye.